Hey guys, I want to talk about, ooh, let me get this right. I want to talk about giving back as one of the five ways to well-being. Um, so yesterday I did a panel event, which was great. Um, uh, I was great, obviously, but but the whole panel event was great. It was for um, a, a company I sometimes work for called TLC Lions. And I was sat on a panel of just amazing, inspirational people. So I felt really privileged to be there in the first place. And... I can't remember what the question was, but my response was that giving back and volunteering and putting myself in situations where I was forced to think about others actually really benefited my mental health. And I I think my response included, I didn't wait before, uh, I didn't wait until I was perfect in order to then volunteer and give back. And sometimes we wait for ourselves to be perfect, to be sorted, to have figured shit out. Um, in order to then be well enough to give back. Um, And I said there was something really powerful for me in, I volunteered in a youth club in the heart of uh, South London and Peckham uh, one night a week. And I was certainly not well. I was in early uh, uh, recovery for alcohol addiction. I was trying to study. I was trying to put one foot in front of the other, but not that long ago, I'd been suicidal myself. And so, I, but I volunteered and it, it sort of relieves you from thinking about yourself all the time. And that's often what happens when we're in a victim mode or if even dealing with depression. Um, we're often thinking about ourselves and, and, and what's sad and what's difficult. And even when I went to AA in the early days, uh, many of you know, I don't go anymore and I have thoughts about that, but that's for another conversation. Um, but they used to say that if you were two days sober, you were more sober than, the, you know, you could help the person who was one day sober. If you were a month sober, you could help the person who was one week. And we were encouraged to connect with those people to support uh, the person who's slightly uh, kind of earlier in their days of, of, of you know, thinking about themselves. Um, equally, one of my first jobs uh, was as a key worker uh, for a, a charity organization called Catch-22. Um, and I worked with kids who'd been kicked out of school. So they were in pupil referral units. Um, I didn't know that much. It, I mean, it's, I still find it hilarious that the people with the less skills and qualifications are often the ones on the street um, kind of connecting with the hardest to reach kids. And I actually have the best memories of the, the, the year or two that I was in that key worker role. So another thing was, I, when I was engaging, so as a key worker, I, would, it, I had like a caseload of 15 kids and I would meet them once a week. I mean, perfect job, right? Um, you could just um, meet them, get some food, you know, meet in a cafe, chat, go for a walk and try and support them in some way. It helped me realize that as, as kind of crazy as my story is, everyone has a story and some of these kids had much worse stories than I had, you know. I had parents who loved me and um, consistent support despite the kind of cult context. Um, and some of these kids, like this, this one boy that um, I will always remember in my heart and soul, uh, he claimed to be a white supremacist, um, but was really just hurting in so many ways. And his mom was um, sick and his dad wasn't in the picture. And so there's a lot of fear that if he even left his, you know, neighborhood or his area and wasn't there for his mom, um, you know, she might pass away and he would feel like he was left with nothing. Um, that's extreme, right? And, um, uh, and it gave me perspective. So these little bits of reaching out to other people gave me perspective. Now, what was interesting was somebody came up to me after the panel event, um, really emotional, talking about his brother who um, is giving back in some way, but is almost, he felt like using it as um, almost like a workaholic, like a volunteeraholic or a give backaholic, you know, uh, as a way of maybe um, separating himself from his own challenges and his family, even his support networks in this great aim of helping others. And it got me thinking, and I don't know enough about that story, so I'm not going to comment, but it got me thinking about the boundary. So what's the boundary? How do we know where to give back as a way of looking after our own well-being and doing good in the world and supporting others? And what's the line between actually, is that a way of escaping from ourselves 
uh, and what we actually need to focus on in looking after our own mental health. And it's balance. As with all of these things, well, first of all, it's personal. So everyone's slightly different. And it's about that radical reflection and honesty for ourselves. And sometimes if we're unable to do that, it's just having a growth mindset and being able to listen to uh, what other people are saying, are noticing. Um, and my advice to this guy was um, rather than, you know, the family making him wrong, you know, and, and going, um, almost blaming him for this kind of focus and, and saying, well, you shouldn't be doing this and you shouldn't be doing this because can't you see that your mental health is suffering? Rather than that, like taking some uh, curiosity to the purpose or, or what is this, this young man getting out of that experience? Because often it can be a survival mechanism to, to give us some purpose. Like as long as I'm supporting some people, I feel like I have some worth and I feel good enough, you know, and I don't, I don't think it's black and white. I don't think we can make that wrong, that giving back in that way um, is, is, you know, cause we, cause we always judge or review based on our own protective instincts, our own hurt, um, our own ideas of what people need to do. Right. Rather than maybe objectively just being curious about that experience and about who what that person is trying to gain or what are the, the great things that they are gaining from uh, that interaction or that giving back. And it was beautiful that it was probably the first time that this guy spoke to me, um, uh, sort of recognized the worth or the, the benefit that perhaps his brother was trying to find within pursuing his charitable cause or the work that he was doing. But I'm also the first to say that work can be an escape and can be a survival thing. And I just felt lucky that the work that I did benefited other people and that the work felt purposeful to me. So I wasn't um, just in, I want to say just in a tech startup, but that there's just like a stereotype, right? Of like sitting in a basement and just never seeing sunlight and working for a thousand hours a day. I know there's not that many hours in a day, people. I do know that. Um, but that sort of, image of doing something that's meaningful to you but maybe isn't benefiting on a global scale and that's another argument right because if people can be really passionate about the, the the impact that they're making in the world but i'm the first to also say that work can be escape an escape for your from yourself i certainly used um education and work to just be like oh, give me some purpose let me actually feel like i'm building on my life and let me just feel like I'm building in some way. Um, and, and I think there's phases in our life. So there's um, seasons, as they say. Um, there's seasons in our life where that's okay. And I think I had, let's say, a decade season where survival, hustle, um, and learning was my primary focus. So getting an education, bearing in mind I didn't have one as a child, um, getting an education was my primary focus. Um, building my self worth, which came through getting an education and building up some experience, so that I felt like I mattered in the world. Whether these are the right um, motivations or not, who cares? In a way, in a way, sometimes we we make things wrong when actually it's just our survival instinct and it's what we need to move forward in that time. So there's a season. But it's reflecting on when that season shifts, right? So I've had to reflect that if I continue to work in the same way, I'm actually going to suck out the joy from what is actually possible now where I'm able to thrive more if I can let the fuck go, right? If I can let go and um, enjoy the journey, enjoy, enjoy all that I've worked for and all that I've worked towards. That's what I want to enjoy. Um, but I still have big ambition and it's transitioned from that survival place. Cause I remember after I did my master's degree, there were people who were like, you know, um, amazing students. And I was just like, I don't even know how I'm surviving this really, you know? Um, and they were going st uh, straight into doctorates and thinking about the next thing. And it became this like FOMO thing. I'm like, oh, okay, so I did a master's, you know, despite the odds, should I, do I need to do a doctorate now? When, when does it stop? When does my self-worth um, build up enough so that I'm okay with me? 
and I'm really glad that I reflected at that time because, because finishing my master's while working full time and raising two kids and not ever being taught how to learn, um, was tough people. It was tough. And had I done any kind of doctor or PhD at the time, there would have been no joy at all. It would have been like white knuckling it, impacting my relationships with my, my, my children and my partner at the time. Um, and I don't think I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. And so sometimes there's a time and a place and I'm not saying I would never do further education, but I was doing it at that point simply to be enough. And I had to then, you know, I went into coaching and different things and, and kind of asked myself the question, if I was enough already, right? And so if my core, in my core, I was enough already, um, how would I behave? What plans would I make? What would I do? If I was enough already, I'm just grabbing some coffee, people. I'm sitting on a sofa today for those who are just in on the audio. And it's lovely and relaxing. Um, so it's reflecting on the season that you're in. But I do think, like, I still mentor some teenagers. I'm about to volunteer uh, in a new, in a homelessness, in a homeless project. I think there's something very profound about volunteering and giving back that is great for our mental health. It's so great for our mental health. Um, it's, uh, and we don't have to be fixed in order to support others. We do need to be able to reflect and have a few boundaries. Um, but perspective, there's something magical about the perspective of volunteering and giving back. As long as you can listen to your body and your mind about the limitations and at what point do we need to pull back? Because there's times when it's like, actually, I'm too fragile. And if I go into, you know, there's places I don't volunteer. I don't volunteer in rape crisis centers because that's like, I mean, people who um, are moved to do that will do that. And I feel like different people have different passions when it comes to volunteering like that would just feel too close to home to me. And I'm not sure I would be the best benefit to people. Um, teenagers though, always, I just love, love, love. I love, I don't even, I haven't even volunteered in addiction that much. Although in this homelessness project that I'm, I'm looking into, um, actually they're, they're going to come, they're going to have me do some group work and stuff, which I'm excited about. Um, homelessness spans lots of issues. So addiction, mental health issues, um, uh, you know, troubled pasts, all the rest of it. So I'm excited about that. And, but people have said to me, people, and they're bloody opinions. People have said to me, um, ooh, are you sure you should be volunteering? Like, don't you feel like you're giving enough? Aren't you giving enough? Because your work is giving. And it is. You know, I, I, I'm a mental health consultant. I teach. I train. But I'm starting to feel that I'm, 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 it's a little bit elitist, right? So I'm teaching and training companies. And, you know, the, the I don't want to say the white male thing, but um, you know, the suits and the, I mean, I, I get to work in, in startups and, and such a range that it keeps me interested, but that's, that's for profit, you know, and I love it. And I do keynotes that are for profit with, you know, suits as well. Um, and I love it because I get out of my comfort zone and I get as authentic as possible always. And it challenges me. And I love that. But there's something around the humility and lots of religions kind of connect into this idea of, of giving back and community. And as much as you know, the religious thing, well, oh, let's not even go on that debate. But I've had to learn to separate out the, this baby and bathwater business, right? So rather than going, because I was raised religious and we volunteer, I mean, please, it's in my blood in a way. Um, I remember working with street homeless people and I was a child myself I say working with you know we'd give out supplies or do do you know whatever we'd entertain and we'd sing and we'd um support and we'd hug and we try and give people emotional support as well as um sort of practical support and that that's in my blood I think um and there was a time when I rejected all of that because I was like fuck that shit I'm not doing what my parents set out for me to do and oh my God, um, at, at this panel event yesterday, I said that I was, that my generation were raised as the elite generation that was supposed to, to save the world. And I said, no pressure. And the guy next to me, Michael Newton said, oh, but you're doing it anyway on stage. Right. And I went, oh, fuck, <laughs> um, they're winning. 
um, I'm saving the world in my own way. Um, and I don't know that I'm saving the world. That sounds like a bit, like, like a lot, but I am, I do have that thread of like giving back and supporting people and, um, helping hopefully people to live their best lives. And it's morphed into something different, but anyway, I was only mildly offended. Um, but it's caused me to reflect on what is the core of my conditioning that's actually stuck with me. And rather than making that a crit criticism, trying to um, f separate the baby in the bathwater. So kind of think, all right, what are the good bits from my past that I actually appreciate and that I actually want to be able to uh, continue or evolve into my own way? And which bits are like, hell the fuck no. Let's never do that shit, you know? But often what we do is we get very black and white. And so we go, because I had this thing in my past or my parents this, in order to protect myself and never uh, be tempted to go there again, uh, I need to run as far, 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 far away from that as possible. And sometimes we then end up burying our authentic truth stuff that's mixed within there. And so it's been quite a journey for me to separate out, oh, actually, there's some great value in giving back. There's some great value in community. I've experienced loneliness and how dark that is. And I've even seen, oh, I've seen the appeal. I, like, I understand why my parents joined the cult. Because those early days were blissfully magical. It was connection. It was shared um, living it was feeling part of something, it was purpose, and it was volunteering, it was giving back in really big ways. And it was over time that the organizational structure uh, as, and power hungry humans and weird, uh, you know, uh, ideas of what we should be doing sort of morphed into something that was a little bit more uh, sinister, shall we say. Um, but volunteering people, giving back in some way, and it could be small, like I've got... Um, there's a guy who, who sort of begs outside of my, my shop, my local shop. Um, and I remember what it feels like to be invisible. I remember what it feels like to be invisible and that you can give money to people or you can ignore them. We get desensitized in, in big cities like London. It's like you, you just see people sort of begging or, or wanting something all the time. Um, but again, that doesn't have to be a black and white, I never help people thing. It could be like, let me connect into source today and see how I can connect in the world. And it could be with a colleague, it could be with a friend that we just get real and we, we see them and we connect, right? Um, but there's a, a guy outside uh, my shop and I've, I've I, you know, I get down on his level and I chat to him, Jean-Baptiste, his name is, uh, poor guys hit some hard times. Um, and, you know, there's some addiction in there. And because I've experienced addiction, I can get real honest about that question without it coming across as a criticism. So I was like, dude, like, I'm 12 years sober. That shit's hard. Like, what's going on for you? And it turns out, you know, he's, he's um, definitely a, a user and really young, though, and it's just hit some hard times. So I make a point of sitting and chatting and creating an emotional place that, and yes, I'll give him some money too, but um, I want him to feel seen and I feel like that's my way to give back. So, I mean, there's great websites like um, uh, doit.org is a great one in the UK if you're thinking about volunteering where you can search all sorts of things within your area. Um, but what I'm trying to challenge is there's small ways, there's small ways that you can uh, be giving back within your day-to-day -day life that don't have to be like, oh, I don't have the time for a long-term commitment um, or to, you know, I'm busy with these other things. But there's something so powerful, connecting, uplifting, and good for our mental health when we get out of our fucking head. Get out of our fucking head. Because that's where all the voices are just hanging out, ready to, like, make us feel shit or to... Um, uh, kind of tell us why we should feel anxious or why we're not good enough or why we're going to fuck this up too. Or um, I've been feeling that fear recently in my, my new relationship thinking, because oh, some of the stuff, the old stuff has been coming up and I'm like, am I just going to fuck this up? Am I going to fuck it up? Am I going to fuck it up? And having that loop in your head probably means that you're going to end up fucking it up, you know? So I actually want to um, connect in 
to different groups. Oh, and this is another point. Um, all the political kind of divisiveness and unrest and us versus them and, and even class us versus them. There's so much us versus them in society right now. And our algorithms and our, our tech and computer kind of social media is set up to um, reinforce our own belief systems, reinforce our own belief systems, rather than challenge us to learn, to develop, to think about other things as well. Um, and so there's something really useful about volunteering or putting ourselves out there with people who are from a different ethnic minority, a different sexual identity, a different gender, um, a different age. You know, there's some great projects. There's this project, is it Care UK? Uh, that w matches young people with older people to support them in their communities, matching sort of loneliness and, and connection. Um, so there's lots of ways of going about this. Um, and it's just putting ourselves out of our comfort zone and actually connecting with other people. So not only are you helping them, but you can challenge your thinking, your way of being, who you are as a person, like the learning, the ROI on learning, the return on investment, is actually immeasurable, like that's huge, because we need to challenge ourselves to get out of our little dinner party circles, our little school gate circles, or even our little work colleague circles that are all people perhaps from somewhat similar backgrounds or education pathways that have led them into a certain place. That's not always the case, but in some companies it definitely is. Um, so that we can challenge ourselves because this is actually what's going to make the world a better place. So I started with like, how do you look after your mental health, which was triggered by this panel and that conversation. And I have, yes, what I've done is I've moved into saving the world. Damn it. I've done it again. <laughs> how can we connect on this human level that actually makes the world a better place rather than this divisive, you believe this, you believe this. Oh, we're so angry. And actually at the, the, the base level, we're all humans. We all need food, shelter, our primary needs, right? Um, and then we need connection. We need belonging. Um, we need challenge. Um, and we can avoid wars and all the rest of the bullshit when we are a little bit humble and practice um, putting ourselves out of our com comfort zone and challenging the fact that we don't know everything. The amount of people that are my age or younger who think they know everything or have, the, have it all figured out, I'm like, are you on a different planet than I am? Honestly, are you on a different planet than I am? Because I feel like there's endless knowledge and like, what do we even know? We, you, can, you can be a philosopher, you can, you can have that PhD, which I didn't get yet. Um, you, can, you can have all this knowledge, book knowledge, all the rest of it. But it's our experienced, our lived experience, our knowledge that comes through practice and showing up that has that actually far more, has far more, far reaching value um, than just books and theory, right? And so there's something, I mean, just, and, and then just get out of our planet and the universe and like, there, it's, it's just a really exciting time because so much knowledge is at our fingertips and so much is out there. It's, it's, but, but we just don't know. And I guess for me, I cultivate curiosity and a desire to learn about myself and about others. And if there was one purpose in life, it is that. To learn about myself, to challenge myself, and to, I guess, in the aim of reaching my highest potential within this human body, within this human form. Um, and the way I learn about myself is also through observing, listening about other people's challenges, how they deal with them just the whole premise of the podcast, right? Is just how do we learn from other people's way of, of coping, surviving, and what they've learned through that. So people, uh, the, the main summary of this podcast is that I want people to think about giving back in some way. Think about challenging your belief systems, the people that you hang around with, and if you're stuck in your head in this loop of like possibly self-pity um, or even anxiety and depression, if you're stuck in a loop or not to mention addiction or a, a number of other um, challenges that you might be facing in a safe boundaryed way that, that connects into what you need with radical honesty about how you can give back, give back, get out of your head and focus in on someone else. And that's not just like a quick fix, like 
oh, if I listen to them, I'll feel, ooh, endorphin. I mean, I've literally had people go, well, I don't volunteer because isn't it really selfish? Isn't volunteering selfish because I get the endorphin hit? And I'm like, oh my, just because you get an endorphin hit from it, can't it go both ways? Can't you be giving back and supporting them and getting, I mean, that's what I call a win-win. That's what I call a win-win is giving back and supporting others. And at the same time, receiving joy and receiving in the first place, right? Um, and, and being open to learning and not doing this like, I know better than you in order to help you. No, no, you, you, life has just led you to the privilege or to the point that you're at. Um, and you can connect and learn through humility, humbly supporting someone else in the best way possible. The benefit isn't just the endorphin hit, but it's getting you out of your head, giving you wider perspective, supporting that person. It also allows you to practice the skills of empathy, listening, um, and all of this stuff is good for your physical health and your mental health. But equally, don't, I recently went to a, um, uh, it was like a voluntary induction in, in this project for so working with older people. And I went out of curiosity. I was feeling lonely and I thought, well, maybe I can give back to someone local who, who is feeling that way as well. Beautiful cause, amazing, passionate people that are getting involved. It's just not my thing. It just doesn't excite me. And um, I don't judge myself for that. I know that I love teenagers so much and I love supporting them. There's a shitload of you all that would be like, teenagers, oh, that terrifies the shit out of me, right? And so I'm like, that's my thing. Your thing might be homeless people. It might be um, little, little children. Um, it could be fostering and, or, or something with a bit more of a commitment. It could be doing projects overseas and supporting people. Um, there's, there's so many hundreds. and It could be, you, know, you can do admin for charities and that, that can be a way of giving back. Like it doesn't have to be, extrovert people facing which is what i love but it could be something that fundraises or supports a cause that's dear to you uh but doesn't takes into account maybe you're an introvert or maybe you have a different skill set so like don't limit yourself because you go oh well i'm not like petra or i don't i'm not into that thing do it.org again if you're uk based is a great place to just like ooh, and experiment with it experiment this is literally my favorite word. Experiment is my favorite word. It is. Because recently I've been, I read the book, The Surrender Experiment. If you listen to my previous rant, I talked about that, the letting go that I'm learning there. God, it's hard. Um, the Surrender Experiment. But the thing that the word I liked was experiment because it meant I didn't have to attach myself to this new wave of being, which was now I surrender and I'm super cool with that. And that's my ethos and whatever. I could be like, hmm, I get it. And it makes sense. I'm going to experiment with it. So in the same way, check out some of those um, volunteering websites or, 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 or you can find, you can go to your community center, you can talk to people um, and experiment with it. So don't be like, oh, I must now volunteer like seven days a week and I can't, how am I going to fit it in? I must also go to the gym, right? Um, but experiment with it. So like I went to this volunteer induction day and I didn't carry on with them, but I chatted to loads of people. I learned a lot. I learned about myself. Um, and it gave me information about actually, no, I, you know, I used to work full time with teenagers and it's still in my heart. It's still in my heart. And this homeless project is something I want to explore and see how I feel about that. Um, there's also beautiful, like mentoring projects where you can go one-to-one -one with a kid. That shit's deep. If you have it in your heart to connect with a kid who may need a secure attachment or somebody who can be a role model for them consistently um, throughout the, like the space of a year or, I mean, like that's fulfillment, but that takes a bit of hard graft and commitment of like, sh you've got to show up consistently. Um, and so there's a, a whole bunch of ways that can be fulfilling and amazing, but I challenge you to experiment with giving back in some way, whether that's having a conversation, whether it's a more formal um, sort of volunteering type scheme or whether in your company they have social impact programs or could have one if you actually talk to the, the the right sort of people and said i'd like us as a company to do some kind of social impact and make some suggestions so it could fit into your work day rather than being something additional that you need to fit on top of things 
And if you're going to say you don't have time, some of you don't, I get it. Um, some of you are pushing on all cylinders like I was when I was studying, um, working. I was still volunteering though. Ha, I was volunteering and uh, had, had my kids. But audit your time, man. Audit your Netflix intake. Yeah. Um, audit your time at the pub. Audit uh, the, the, the time that you spend with toxic friends and you're like, why am I even here? This doesn't, it hasn't given me anything. Audit the routines that you're in with your, um, I don't know, dinner party people, friendship groups. And if you're in like just a cycle, a cycle of sameness that goes round and round, that's a good point to challenge yourself and be like, hey, let's shift this a little bit. And, and who knows the ripple effect that you could have on your friendship group as well by being the first one to put yourself out there and experiment in some way. But in conclusion, volunteering, giving, giving, give back is one of the five ways to well-being, which is researched by the NEF. Um, and you can find that, you can Google that, um, giving back. Um, it's one of the five ways to well-being. Uh, but equally, it can help your mental health. It can help the other person's mental health. It's a win-win. And equally, it has a more global impact of practicing human connection. Because once you're in that empathy zone with that person, it's harder to ignore just the life stuff and, and like showing up to who you really can be and your truest potential becomes possible. So volunteer, uh, give back, let me know how it goes. And if you have any sort of struggles with your own boundaries and you go, I gave back, but actually it negatively affected my mental health in any way. Like, let us know in the comments, um, find me on DM, DM me on Instagram at Petra Belzebor, dot Belzebor, Um, and let me know, uh, because I know that when that balance is struck and you're radically honest with yourself, it gives you purpose. It gives you a reason to live. If you're in that dark, dark place, that's like, fuck, I don't even know if I have a purpose. Volunteer, get out of your head and, and the purpose will emerge. It will. You got to trust that process that if you take action and put yourself out there, purpose emerges because it gives you information. You go, oh, I loved this bit. I'm not really good at it yet, but I can develop that skill or mm, that bit wasn't great. And, and be careful for the, oh, I tried that one thing and it wasn't great and it wasn't my thing. So fuck it. I'm not going to do anything. Be careful for that because that's, that's a fixed mindset that's going, oh, I ticked a box. And I got this one bit of data, this one bit of information, and I'm going to allow that to mean that this isn't for me, right? And so what we want to do, we can create our own meaning. People don't understand. You can create your own meaning about any of this stuff. Um, and your meaning can be, ooh, that's data, that's information. And it's telling me that that's not quite it for me. But let me persist and put myself out there in a different scenario. And take that data and allow myself to reflect because it will give me information about how to pivot and move to the next level. I don't understand why more people don't take this approach in life. I literally live my life in this way. It's like, how can I gather data, reflect on it, and decide, crucial word, decide what meaning I'm going to give it? And the meaning usually allows me to take the next step into further fulfillment, enjoyment, success, uh, joy, and building a life that I love. And I don't think it's going to end. I think that's the process of life is to continue learning and developing because there's just endless amounts of data and information. But we'll, what I will say, people, and what British people in the culture um, seem to, it's not a natural, it's not culturally natural, is to celebrate the wins. All this modesty, people. Um, celebrate the wins. And there's a real difference between arrogance and only talking about yourself or thinking about yourself and celebrating the wins. And I've learned to do that so that along the way, even though I'm constantly looking for the next achievement post and the next thing and all of that, I've learned to celebrate these marker points um, along the way where I can go, Damn, I was good at that. And I can say if I, was, I did a shit talk or it wasn't great. Um, and if I've done a good one, I'll be like, damn, that was good. Either in my head, people. Um, or I'll t I've got a couple of people that I can celebrate wins with uh, like nobody's business. And they'll do it with me as well. I'll be like, what are you proud of? 
what are you most proud of about yourself and about life at the moment? Oh, I get to think about that. And I go, so I'm really proud of some marker points in my life. Like I'm proud that I got um, over alcohol addiction. I'm proud that I got a master's degree. Oh, super proud of that. I'm proud of my kids and the parent that I've learned how to be. I'm really proud of that because I was a shit parent when they were younger. Um, I'm proud of certain talks or certain things that I've done, or I've, I'm really proud of having put myself out there in, in something that was totally out of my comfort zone, even if it wasn't perfect. So there's ways that you can switch this and equally in giving back. Sometimes all we're doing is planting the seed without getting the exact result that perhaps we anticipated. And I'm really proud that I showed up at that induction evening just to get, get some information because I could have stayed home and watched Netflix and whatever, but I went out and, and um, I learned something. So I'm proud of myself for putting myself out there consistently. Um, I'm proud of the days that I exercise and that I actually have some balance around food. I'm not perfect around that stuff. But when I do it, I'm like, yay me. And I'll text someone or I'll be like, yay me, I hit the gym. Or yay me, I, I, I meditated this morning. Um, so c- celebrate the wins. And all of this allows us to stay in balance. So radical honesty and reflection time, which is tough in our, you know, always on the go society. It's tough. Um, but being able to consistently reflect in whatever that looks like, um, journaling, meditation, walking, taking a step back from the day to day in order to go, hey, what am I learning? Um, have I put my taken, have I gotten out of my comfort zone recently? Am I challenging my thinking? Am I, am I being, am I being who I want to be? Who am I in the world? Um, all of these questions are really useful for moving our lives forward and developing ourselves and taking a step into a a wider connection uh, within a global community. So let me know how you get on. Give back, volunteer, support others, and do it before you think you're perfectly fixed or ready because that day may never come. That's not meant to be depressing. We're just always on a journey of self-development and it will evolve. So it might be light at the moment. And over time, it could be more intensive. Um, But give back. I think if that's the one thing that you do today, or that you research today, it's where can I start? And just start, just fucking start people. Don't wait for the perfect lineup. That's the thing that, you know, that's where how dreams die is waiting for perfection. Don't wait for perfection. Just like show up. And I remember that first day that I walked into this, um, Peckham Youth Center, uh, feeling like, fuck, like, I'm going to get yelled at. I don't belong. I don't belong. And I'd show up on a Wednesday night, every Wednesday night, and there was basketball and table tennis and dance and just different sort of activities. They didn't really need me there. I think it was a well-funded youth center. But I showed up and I chatted to kids and I just, in my awkwardness, tried to learn from the other youth workers and, and be present. So but I had to start there in order to now be asked at this homeless charity to run group sessions uh, on mental health and a variety of diff- different things, being able to come in as an expert. Back then, I was, I, was, I was a nobody. I didn't have an expertise other than a willingness and a desire to learn and to support and to be with the young people. And that was enough. So start today. Don't wait for perfection. Have a good one. Let me know how you get on.